from this computer. Okay, we are good to go. Um, go live. Uh, go live anyway. Okay, so setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. We are, looks like it's going to be streaming. I'm going to check on, we're a little bit late, but it's fine. No, I, did, I did message people, so. Okay, we are, we should be live. Okay, so, um, for all accounts and purposes, we are live. Um, I'm now using my, my, my work computer, Sifu, which is set up for Zoom as well. So it seems to be going well. So let me just check if everything is working on Facebook. Yes, yep, yep it looks like it was working. Okay, so for those that are, are joining, please excuse the delay. Um, I seem to be riddled with technical issues <laughs> and uh, we managed to finally uh, finally fix it. Uh, Zoom and Facebook weren't talking very nicely together. I had to, uh, as Alex said, uh, turn it off and on again and then hit it with a gauchoi and now we're working. So we are kindly being joined by a man that, me that needs no introduction, Sufu Paul Ritrod. Um, he's kindly given up some of his time, he's, well, we will have a lot of it, uh, to be interviewed. So we are live on the Facebook group, the Southern Praying Mantis group, and Alex is keeping an eye on any questions um, that you may have. Uh, we've already got a list of questions to ask you for Paul. And so as we're going live, write the questions down. Um, say hello. We've got online seafood. We've got Alex Liu from America, Nick, Jonathan Fielder, John Haygood's online and live. He's saying hello as well. Um, so a few people are joining and more will come and say hello. So Sifu is uh, at his house in the UK. Uh, we're all sitting comfortably and we have a whole bunch of questions that me and Alex uh, have gathered from the community to ask Sifu Paul. Um, Sifu Paul, if you can just um, say hello. And I'll tell you what, just start with a little bit about um, how long you've been training Mantis um, so we can get an idea if the, the audio is fine. Uh, 1975. 19, I started in 75. And, and you started with um, Sifu oh. Ibchi Kang, right? Back in, back in those days? Yeah, Master Chico. He was in London, and um, yeah, he was here until maybe seventy-eight, something like that. I'm not too sure what year he went back, but seventy-eight, nineteen seventy-eight. Then I carried on a couple of years with my Kung Fu brothers, and then I went to Hong Kong in about nineteen eighty, end of nineteen eighty. Fantastic. So audio seems to be good um, from. The people on Facebook, it seems to be that they can hear and everything is, is working. Fantastic. All right. So we're going to start. So Sifu, the, the way this works is it's an ask me anything type of live interview. Yeah. So we've already done a, yeah, we've already done a prime, uh, 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 an interview with before, which is on YouTube. So there are people that are uh, already aware of some of the history and we've already asked some questions. So um, one of the first questions we have uh, is what are your favorite things about Southern Praying Mantis? Well, I like the, um, the closeness and the, the, the jerk and the pull and the coming in close and relentlessly crushing down your opponent to finish him off. And uh, with, uh, with Chalgar Southern Praying Mantis, um, what do you feel are its key strengths? Key strengths? Uh, it's arms and it's short range power. Uh, in the sense that, um, you know, the, it's suitable for quick self-defense maneuvers and getting the fight over and done with very quickly. And do you feel that it has straight up does it have any weaknesses or do you feel there's anything missing or needed 
to make it even more complete? I think it's enough to um, to defend yourself. Um, I don't think there's any weaknesses in there. I mean, obviously, if you want to take it further, you may like to, to do other things that, that, that I do, but obviously in, in itself, it's, it's okay and it's enough. Um, so what are the other arts that you train and how have they influenced your 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 own uh, your own training in in mantis so to speak um I, sometimes i think you have to go out to look in and that's what i've done um and the other arts that i practice is uh actually it started around about 1989 i actually done a bit of tai chi the 108 yang style tai chi back in 1989, something like that. Um, that was from a gentleman who came over from uh, China and he was staying very close to me. And uh, he said, like, would you like to learn Tai Chi? And that's how I started to do my first martial art outside Del Baton Rong. Um, I was aware of, I had a few uh, close close friends that done calorie. Um, and uh, I was always interested in that. And that was around about 19, in the 90s, somewhere, um, like early 90s. And then I went to uh, India to carry on that calorie. So calorie, also Xing Yi, Xing Yi with uh, Ji Jiang Chen and Ba Gua with Ji Jiang Chen, um, and Siu Lam, Shaolin, five animals. Uh, also uh, other martial arts such as wrestling and uh, BJJ with Leo Nagao. Um, what other things? Oh, <laughs> so much, eh? You, you, um, yeah, you don't stop. You don't stop training, and and you you teach. I, I love people say, "How is it possible I can do all this?" But I love training. I, I I'm doing it every day, um, and I, I never seem to recover half the time. But however, I I love what I do, and I teach what I preach. You know. What's a What's a typical day look like for you Sifu from like Monday to Saturday I know I know in some occasions you're up at six o'clock in the morning and doing privates but like for those that don't know what's a typical day like you, for, for you and um, because I move a little bit further away but usually I used to start very early sometimes at seven sometimes eight o'clock doing training teaching people I mean like a uh, hands-on um, doing plenty of riding on Dui Jong if it's a stubborn mantis. But I always enjoy teaching and training people and doing it with them. I, I can't just sit and just look. It's very difficult for me. Um, I, I just feel I have to quickly go in all the time. <laughs> if that makes sense. Thibu, um, the one, one of the things that comes up a lot with, with the um, mantis is about, the, about groundwork. With the yeah like the uptake of the uh, MMA stuff now, everyone's talking about jiu-jitsu and, and ground game. And, and within Southern Mantis is the um, Punungurt form, which is, yeah. you know, on the floor. But um, yeah. what, what do you think, I mean, that can you explain a bit about that form and what its purpose is? Yeah, obviously you need to move on the floor. And if, if it's in a street fight, you don't want to be on the floor too long. I don't think it's possible to, to fight on the floor if, if there's one or two people. It's, it's, it's just difficult. Um, and I'll tell you how this, this, this came about. I, I, when I was in Hong Kong, uh, there was a program called uh, Enjoy Yourself Tonight. It's a very old program. They used to introduce lots of different martial artists, you know, from in the early days, it was in, in the 70s, it was Bruce Lee, uh, in the 60s, 70s, early 70s. And then later on, different martial arts. So anyway, one day, um, we was watching television, me and Sikon, enjoy yourself tonight. And there was, a, there was a, a, a demonstration by a group of people doing monkey, monkey martial arts. And they started rolling about. And then Grandmaster started to laugh. He said, oh, ah, no good, you know? And he, he moved the chairs. And he started to roll about on the floor. And I said, Sigong. I said, because Sigong, Grandmaster, surely there must be some uh, fighting on the floor. And that's when Pung started. And it's a very similar thing with uh, stuff like Yao Long, with uh, Yao Long, which is the Swing Dragons. So that's how it started. 
and uh, obviously uh, Pumunga is a part of the Manta system. And you need to get up and go down, get up and go down. Because if you're in a fight, you need to get up and get down. That's very important. And that's what it actually does. Obviously, the, you know, the amount of locks involved is not as much as, say, BJJ or some other wrestling maneuvers. However, it's there for you to, if you fall on the floor, you get up quickly. And if you notice with Paul and Bert, you get up, go down, get up, go down. Mm. This, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the method. And obviously, in a street fight, you want to get that quickly over and done with. Very quickly, you know, you don't want to waste too much time just on the floor. However, if you, if you want to be a complete martial artist, you need to do one, two, and three. You can't just, um, just do one. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So you say, you said when when the uh, uh, Sigong so it was rolled about on the floor, and that's where it started. But but it existed. Pulungak existed. I'm not saying it didn't start. It was started there. Yeah. Just trying to clear it up. For it, it, it was emphasized to me at that point. Yeah. And he moved the chair, and I tell you how I can describe it. It was like a young boy with a hot head of an old man. That's and I, uh, I was like this, and that's that's when it began. You know? So I'm not for me it began. Paul and Kurt. I mean, he has taught this to a few other people, but I, yeah. I, I you know not many people do it. I don't know why, but it, it's just the way it is. Sometimes the old masters often release their skills a lot long, a lot lot later in their life, as opposed to when they're in their early life. Mm. What was it? What was it like training with Grandmaster? What was his character like? And um, what were some of the thing, key things that he taught you? Because um, you learned directly from him. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, well, when I when I went to Hong Kong, um, I knew about so I knew about ten, maybe eight or nine, ten forms. I'm not sure, you know. And then Grandmaster emphasised on other things that I needed to do. So um, yeah, uh, it was great getting up in the morning, teaching me something, and teaching me something at night. Uh, at that time, my Sifu, his son, he was working in those days as, as, a, as a bus driver. So obviously, I had all the time with Grandmaster, and it was great because he liked to pull me about. You know, when he got on a mini bus, hey, you know, I told you now, I told you now. You know, meaning, <laughs> meaning that uh, he, he, was, he was happy to show me who I was to everyone. And we would go out. We would have in those days when I was a little bit of a demon, me teaching and all that him some and all that sort of thing so <laughs> he would drag me everywhere and we would go everywhere and we would train whenever we can you know obviously he wasn't too much physical because he, he was very old then i think he must have been about 69 then maybe i'm not too sure 70 possibly mm. you know all that. i mean if you work out the you know i wish i filmed a lot of it but obviously um, so do we <laughs> I've got, I've got some old cine film. I'm, I'm always meaning to sort of like uh, get these put on on a, some process where I can watch them again because, you know, they're about five minutes long, if I remember rightly. So, um, yeah, I've got right. two somewhere. So, and there's some demonstrations on there, there's, there's, and there's Grandmaster there. Um, um, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Uh, can you tell, tell us a bit about your memories of training in, in uh, Parkouling Road with, with uh, Grandmaster, but you, you trained with other people there as well? Yeah, of course. You know, students will come in all the time. Um, you know, so usually after we get up, I'll do a little bit of training. Grandmaster will show me something. And then later on, we go dim sum. Sometimes we go, Grandmaster always was uh, teaching in, uh, used to go to, Mongot, and we used to go together. We used to uh, train with a group of people in Mongot, and we would come back home, and I trained again. It was it was consistently, you know, training. And uh, the only two days he didn't train was on the weekend. So uh, you know, I have fond memories because obviously Grandmaster was a very, very uh, funny person. You know, he was very, um, very always joking, always laughing. You know, um, so that, that, that's my fond memories of Grandmaster. And um, that that what intrigued me more about him, you know, not just as a just as a martial artist, but as a character as well. Oh, I miss him because obviously, uh, you know, he was he was part of my growing, if you like to. Yeah. To say. Do you do you feel that he 
he still had much more to teach, even up until even up until his his sad passing away. Believe it or not, he was still teaching me. I think I was in Hong Kong three months before he passed away. And then I came back. He was still teaching me something then. So uh, mm. I, I, whether there's any more, I, I don't know. Um, you know, that's uh, that's that's what's in. But you know, if you have, if you understood the system. <clears throat> if you understand the system, even if you have only 50% of the system, I think you can understand the rest of it, if you're serious. Um, and just following on from that, what do you, do you think, or do you feel some of the main understandings of the system should be, even if it's 50%? Um, if you could put it into words. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, no problem. I mean, basically, is to train your you train your, 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 your frame, your, your body, your, your ribs, your hips, you train your legs, you train your arms, you keep your, training all the different binding arms and all the different joints. This is the main function. So you develop a frame that is powerful and strong. So you just literally go through the person. That, that's, that's the important, uh, the, the first step. The later step is to get more softer. So obviously, I mean, uh, well, maybe a question might come up in a minute, so I won't say what I was going to say then. <laughs> I'll mention it. Yeah. It, it probably will come up because there are, um, people are intrigued about what the, the, the main parts to develop, especially on your own, because um, there's people that, that haven't got contact with others, but, mm, but together yeah. as well, you know, functionally, talking about the the structure body structure yeah. the framework you know the, the conditioning and then the internal softening to, to yeah. be able to utilize it all fluidly but th this actually it brings up a good question Sifu and, and I think it's one that's coming up a lot with everyone being in in isolation um, what do you uh, what for you are the most important things to train or what should you train uh, as solo training uh, within within Southern Praying Mantis, and even and it might not have to be Southern Praying Mantis. What other things do you think are worth doing? Yeah, keep well. Always practice your basics. You know, the stronger your basics are, then the the, the better the advanced maneuvers are. You know, grandmasters uh, um, grandmaster can just see one form, and you will know the rest of the form. It's not possible for you to do one form very good and in another form totally horrible it, it, it is a level and once you reach that level every every technique or form will resonate at that level it's not like you, you do one form really good and it's like strong and in the next form you can't do it it doesn't work like that it's a literally built up just from the you know the choke uh, sorry uh, the choke numbing ging ging mm. but as you apply as you apply that principle then you get to that level and your techniques will become even better can I just, um, you just mentioned Chogun, Umgeng, and Gengeng. Can you explain yeah. a bit about those for people? This is the three levels. Chogun is when you first train and you, your, your power is all rough. Numgeng is when it becomes a little bit hidden, but it may be a little bit stiff. And then later on, as you get more better, you will then get Gengeng, which is then a little bit of shock power, but you must incorporate. The, the, the soft elements of Tao Ga Tao Ma. You cannot, you cannot get Gen Gen unless you practice the soft elements. Very interesting, yeah. And Sivu, how, how, how does one progress through each of these different powers? The rough power, then the hidden power, and then the, the, the shock power? Uh, how is one trying to... Well, obviously, one has to look inside themselves when they're training. I mean, you can be training for years and um, so many years and not feeling anything. Maybe you have to look and feel what's happening. You have to believe what's happening. Um, if you just just train just like it's like a gym, you go in, you do a bit of training, you sweat and you go home. You have to analyze everything. And the more you analyze everything, the more you become better and your mind will become clearer of what to do. Yeah, Sibyl, um, Ip Chi Kung, uh, Grandmaster Ip Chi Kung, 
has once said that the, the system is a system of the imagination. In other words, you have to use your mind to analyze and to make yeah, using, discoveries. I mean, look, I mean, as I say, I, I, I mean, uh, you have to use your mind, but I don't think the word imagination is prop properly. I mean, because you can imagine anything. Um, can you imagine yeah. something's happening, you know, it's not really I mean, what he imagines and what that person imagines it. Right. Like I said, you have to use your mind and, and, and if there's anything that come out, the result will be there. And if it was real, the result will be there. If yeah. the result is not there, then you're not using your mind. <clears throat> You've got to channel that energy, your mind in your mind and your body. Not just for the world, but your mind and your body. Some so what would what would be your best advice for people practicing mainly on their own? Well, I mean, obviously, there's lots of things you can do. Um, it depends on what type of body you have, because some people's body is suitable for developing different aspects. But uh, for me, I like doing all the gongs, all these hao gong and the, the, the nam gong, uh, the sam gong sao and... All the different types of dip bar form. I, I like doing this. I like feeling that that feeling, feeling your tendons, feeling your bones, feeling your feeling like that kind of feeling. So obviously everybody's different, but um, yeah, practice your basics, keep it going. When we say practice our basics, it means developing your basics that you're going to use, not just doing one exercise. Um, you have to do it. You have to do many different types of exercises, but the thing is, you keep practicing the basic techniques. What do you what do you see uh, as the main the main purpose of the the chi sung up? What is it actually building, um, and and why is it so important? Yeah, chi sung up. Chi sung up is for the elbow and the back, and also the breath. When you go through, you breathe in, you come up, you exhale. Chi sung up is a little animal. Uh, and this little animal is doing this, you know. Yeah, the chi sung up. The for elbow, shoulders, and they're different types. Different you, types of chi sung up from one arm press ups to doing, you know. If you if you had to choose, what would be your favorite gong? Favorite gong? Yeah. Uh, the wrist gong. I like feeling my forearms. <laughs> <laughs> I like feeling here. But it, but actually, all the gongs I, I enjoy, I enjoy them all. But sometimes having that, that feeling, like you just put, if you do gongs properly and you feel, it's like it puts um, some Sweet. kind of cloth over you, like as if to say, wow, yes, feel good, feel good. You know, so that, that is, that's, that's important. I like that feeling. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like that feeling. I used, when I was first starting, Mantis, <clears throat> when I used to work, I, used, I was a printer many years ago, lithographic printer, and I was training at that same time. <clears throat> and then I would, I would I'd done, uh, at that time, I, I was taught Sapa and Ging Sao and a few other forms. So I, during my printing, I would go to the toilet, lock myself in, and do lots of forms in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and they often said to me, oh, where you been? You know, I, I, yeah, I just love the feeling. I, I love all my shoulders being, it's like I'm being put back together. Mm. Uh, we have a question. Speaking of solo training, I, 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 I don't know if I pronounce this right. What's your take on Kam Kong Yuen Mo Gong? Is it like an essential set like clamping palms? Does that make yeah. sense to you? Uh, you mean Hap Jung Kong? I, 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 the, the term is, you know, you mean like a sort of like internal side. Mm. Um, there's many different skills. I mean, I'll give you an example. So when you first start, you know, you do the the first one is uh, G lit, yeah. Yep. You bring down, you pull up. This is the basic one. You grip your legs. This is all the go grip your stance here and here. You pull up. You pull up your back side. You sink your head here. Don't let your body go like this. Keep it straight, and you pull in. Breathe in. Gilek. Next up, Gilek. Yes. Okay. Number one. Number two, Hap Jeng Gong. So you practice. Make sure your palms are still together. 
some companies just palms together, on left and right. I mean, practice. I mean, up German ball. Uh, sorry, Sapa on King Sal. Learn to breathe. This one, many people neglect, but you're actually supposed to turn your waist. So as you turn your waist, you push forward. People just do this. But actually, later, it's using the yugong. The yugong is, means waist cut. And then the wrist exercises, again, is wrist training. You know, you, you do the wrist up and down. And this one I really like, you know. I, I enjoy practicing this, this one because it gives me a great feeling of, 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 of this in um. the arm. So when you contact, look, listen, at the end of the day, when you have a fight, what's the first thing you're going to contact? It's your arms. That's the first thing you're going to contact. So you need to do a bit, need a little bit of practice on the forearms and so when you contact. Sifu, has, um, has the way you trained changed as you've gotten older? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more conscious of things these days. I mean, uh, you know, probably when I was younger, I was more aggressive with everything, um, too much aggression. But um, that, that's changed. Uh, but um, what I do is, it's like the same thing, it's the same plant, like a plant. It's the same thing, but it's grown more. But it's the same plant. It's grown bigger and it's produced flowers. So you can see and appreciate more. As you, as you develop internally, you see more from the same thing. So that's how it's changed. But my training itself, as always. We've got a question from, um, uh, from Simon uh, in Hatfield. Yeah. Uh, what is the main lesson or essence you've learned and acquired from your life and journey in the arts? The lessons are to be a, you know, a proper person. Um, uh, my life changed more so when back 30 years ago when I became a Hare Krishna devotee saw that everything is uh, limited in the sense that, you know, this body is limited and, you know, its duration has a small duration. So become a better human being. That's, that's to me, is, is important as well. Uh, and a follow-up question from, from Simon, <laughs> which is your favourite of the arts that you've studied for self-defence? It's got to be Manis. Please say Manis. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I, I like them all. Uh, some some things have had great potential, you know. There are some things that you say, "Oh, that's a bit dicey," but however, I, I like them all. I, I I wouldn't do them if I didn't like them. Yeah. And secondly, also, I mean, uh, you know, it's nice if you're going like this all the time. Sometimes it's nice to do that. <laughs> See, um, the well, there was a, a previous question as well about the um, ginger fist and the phoenix. Uh, the ginger fist and the phoenix. Can you uh, can you just show people the the way of holding the fist in Jalga for and, and and the reason behind it as well? Would yeah. be interesting. Okay, so this is it. So this one here, like this. Fung Lang Choi. Yeah, Fung Lang Choi. So here, like yeah. this. And this this thumb is behind. And this, I tell you something very important. Your your fist should be. Not this. Yeah. Yeah. So this this tendon, this tendon, and this tendon flexes. Can you see? Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So that tendon flexes this one. I mean, you probably can't see it with the light. However, that's very important. Really? So the fish should be like this. Yeah, it shouldn't be like that or like mm. this. And keep it straight as well. So yeah, that's important. And the Burma Archoi. Going out to when I was uh, first started, uh, it was actually uh, Mr. Hal Sifu. Not, yeah. You know, he actually was there. I mean, he probably he was about 23 then. I was about 15, 16 at this time, you know. So he he, he used to do it going out to is like this with a little hole. Like you cannot, I still remember it to this day. You can hold an egg inside. <laughs> But uh, going out choy is this one. The reason why is because this little finger should be firmly pressed. Yep. So this tendon here, the, uh, the, the owner tendon here is flexed. So that's it. And you keep it straight. Don't do this. 
So when you do Tai Tao, you keep this, this straight. Yeah. That's 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 there, but make sure that these these tendons are are uh, activated. Are, uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Sibu, um, yeah. can you tell us what is the mindset of Chaga Southern Praying Mantis, uh, the main concepts, and if possible, some of the theory? Uh, well, the theory is that, um, you know, the bridge hand theory. So, the, you know, the story, the, not the story, so the, 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 uh, the poem is that you don't come, I don't start. Mm. If there is no bridge, a bridge mean your arms. You create a bridge. And if you create a bridge, make sure you're on top of the bridge. So this is the first, one of the first basic theories. Start your hands that come from your heart. You don't come, I won't start. Mm. If there's no bridge, you make a bridge. If there is a bridge, you put your hand on top of the bridge. This is the first, first uh, rule. And then the second rule is when you, when you, Training, dip wa gong, gang tang gang, chi sang ga, chi chi gong. So dip wa gong, ribs. So when you punch, you, you, you use your ribs, you use your shoulder, and it comes from the nine parts. If we talk about three at the moment, one, two, three. But however, it comes up from the legs, the spine comes out, and that's why you round your back. But you don't concave it. Uh, what I mean to say is you don't, people do think it's all concave. It's not, it's just dropped. Mm. So you're strong, you know, so you're, you're, you're solid. This is the first, second rule, I should say. So that's, mm. that's one. And, and obviously, just like I said, it's like the mantis cutting hands should be that when you're coming in, you're, you're moving and you're, you're literally going through that person because you've got a strong bridge arm, a strong ma, the ma in the horse, the step you can easily go through that person very quick and efficient. Um, Sifu, is this is a question from Rodrigo uh, Barris. Is Sambo Jin or any other form enough for Fa Jing training or Geng Tang training? Again, going back to what I said, you know, you mm. may only do one form, but you can really achieve a great deal from it. So it can be enough, but you need to understand it. Sometimes you need to look, look, give me an example. There's the Qigong exercises, and the first form is the first one. But there's many other Qigong exercises going along as we, but then you can bring everything back into the first form. So if you're doing Dip Wa Gong as a solo exercise, you can also bring that back into your first form. If you're doing the, the, the gripping of the waist and Dip Wa Gong, and the Hao Gong, all these things, you can bring it back into the first form. But sometimes you need to learn everything else to come back. So you can encase the same thing. Just like Grandmaster said, the first Ba Sik, Ba Sik is the eighth cycle, is a very most important part of the first form because it contains everything there. But you need to you need to get the other stuff also. But it can be done. It's like doing some of the other exercises. Um, wake up that bit that you are aware of it, and then you put it back into somebody in. That's right. Yes. So, yeah. I would say that. Yes. Of course. You're right. Correct. You know, it's like, you know, you just, you can see something or not feel something from there. You can put it back into first yeah. one. You can even do, um, sok sok bon. you can also do that. Yeah. There's a, a question about it actually. Um, with the uh, son sok gong, uh, uh, is it only a party trick or can one actually move around and fight with them sucked up? So for those that don't know, sun sok is the raising of the testes into the body. Um, firstly, I mean, if you, uh, I don't know how many people have had a real fight, but um, when I was younger, I used to fight, and when you get kicked in the groin or anything like that, it doesn't hurt anyway. Your body, your body adrenaline pulls them up. It's a natural response. It pulls them up, and your blood goes into your stomach and all that. So when you fight, you you don't feel this pain. 
However, you know, obviously to train them, to train sok sok kong, you can be done. It's the control of the muscle on the breathing. And you know, if you do it properly, you can do it in maybe six months to a year. I don't really practice it that much. I, I teach it, but I don't really practice it. Um, but um, if you have to grip and pull them up and so, tell someone to kick, no, that's okay. But, you know, it works. But um, when you're really fighting, when I say real fighting, you won't feel a groin, groin kick. It, it automatically comes up. That's from my experience. <laughs> 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 Sifu, um, I can tell you some things that won't work and work, you know. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, people try to bite me, and it don't work. You, you know, biting doesn't work. All that sort of thing it doesn't work in a real fight because you, you, you know, you, someone bite you, it just makes you more mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, here's a question. Uh, earlier, you mentioned the three progressions: rough, hidden, and gang gang. How do you recognize which level you are at? And consequently, how do you train in such a way to posture yourself towards advancing upwards? That's from Ben Barkley. Uh, how do you recognize it? Well, the different levels. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to be honest with yourself. I mean, you know, um, I, don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, there's always a level to go, go up and up. But you've got to be honest with yourself. You know, you can demonstrate a form through game, you know, but that doesn't mean to say you've got it. Um, so uh, obviously you, you will feel whether you have it or not by literally the contact you have with your, with, your, with your opponent or with your training partner, whether they feel it or not. I can say what I like. I can say, oh, I have game power, but when I contact with him, <laughs> he doesn't feel anything. So, so the other person will feel it for sure. You might feel it, but actually he, no one else feels it. Um, I think that really, for me, is one of the kind of thing that epitomizes the need for a Sifu and someone who guides you because they can see it more clearly than you can yourself. Yeah. And obviously, you know, you do these, you train these, these drills and you will feel, you will feel mm. it. Um, but, but everybody's different and uh, everybody feels it at a different time. Some people can do it in a short period of time. Some feel that happiness. When you start feeling it, for sure, for sure, there's there's a big gain in that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got a question from David Welter uh, or Welter. Uh, Sifu, there are many chongs in Chaoga. What are some of your favourites and why? Uh, I do. I like um, I like for for training, uh, Dai Zhong, Dan Zhong. I like Dan Zhong, mm. especially Dan Zhong, this one. Danjong is a single single arm one, right? Uh, the strength training ones. Of the ones that I like to do uh, for the for myself, my own person, I like the ones where it's it's kind of easy to do when you're when you're easy sparring. So I like lap saljong. If I had an opponent, I would show you. Uh, uh, not an opponent, uh, a training partner. I would show you what what jongs I like, but lap style jong and uh, especially moving jongs where you move left and right. That's for the next interview. Uh, huh? The the, the, the tr one showing us the jongs with the uh, training part. That's for the next interview. <laughs> yeah, we'll <laughs> wait until we can. Sifu, we've got a, a, another question which is quite interesting. It's from Alex Shandor. Sifu, what is your favorite story from the Vedas about the warriors like Arjuna? And what lesson can we draw from it for today's life? Oh, well, there's so many. I mean, I love great, these great stories. I mean, I could go on for a long time with these stories. But um, I think that uh, the, the fearlessness of Arjuna. Arjuna was, uh, in the beginning, showing remorse regarding his family, his friends. But um, later, Krishna convinced him that all these people that are on this battlefield, they're already past dead and, they're all, and their, their fate is sealed. So Arjun would be a great example of that fearlessness because we live in a world that is very fearful. Every moment, every part of, uh, of our lives, we can be fearful. Just like right now, we've got this so-called coronavirus, but actually we can die any moment. We can just walk the streets and then, so we have to be fearless. And as a martial artist, we also have to be fearless. 
So that's the first rule, and that's, uh, that's the first thing I would think of in, in times of the Mahabharata and the battle of Kurukshetra with Arjun and uh, the, the um, discourse with uh, Arjun and Sri Krishna. So be fearless, but still wash your hands, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, <yeah>, especially you. <laughs> Sifu. Um... Why are there so many different Heigong sets? What's the difference between Qigong and Heigong? Um, now, Qigong is just Qigong is Mandarin. Mm. Um, you know, you know, Qigong, uh, if you, the Chinese character are for Hei, you know, so I dry it on my hand, dry it on my hand. And then it, 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 the, the description is the steam coming from the rice. Yeah. So in, in Cantonese it's called Hei, and in Mandarin it's called Qi. It's the same thing, just like uh, Fa Jing and Gen Ge. It's a similar thing, same thing. So why are there so many different gongs? Because some gongs are important for aspects of the different parts of the body, which I explained earlier, that you can bring back into your first form. However, you know, to train your legs, your joints, your tendons, there are different gongs for different sets to emphasize on a particular thing. So you've got to, you've got to really emphasize if you want to help, you know, you can do the whole gong where you put your tongue, mm. breathe and stretch, you close the, an intent and pull it. And so your throat, how gong means throat, and this becomes very hard. So you can practice just that on its own. But later you can also dip by gong, although it's, you separate it, but later you can do the same feeling in first form and dip by gong. Just, just in the first form. On that, Sifu, um, looking at regular iron palm or iron palm training in general, mm -hmm. uh, what is blood sand palm and how is it different from regular iron palm? Well, the, the blood sand palm, the reason why it's called blood sand palm is because when you, when you hit someone, it leaves a mark. You might leave a handprint. And the handprint is like little bits of blood, you know, little spots of blood. So Hutsa uh, Jung just refers to the little specks of blood that come out. So when you, if you slap someone really hard, you will see the same kind of result. Yeah, they're like little tiny, so it looks like bits of sand, blood sand. That's why it's mm. blood. That's why. And uh, the general iron palm training, the first one, you do hand over tip. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, on a bag or on someone's hand, if they can condition themselves. It's good to practice on some people's hands because you get a feeling of, uh, get a feeling of uh, life. Hmm. So, so um, Hutsa germ just means those specks of blood you know, appeared on the skin. Hutsa germ. Hut means blood. Sa means sand. Germ means palm. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, uh, the, the, um, people have asked about hanging power, the hanging power in the arm. Mm. Can you explain a bit about what that is, how it develops? Yeah, sure. I mean, this has come to the soft, soft part of Jalga. You know, the, 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 the piece of string with a stone on the end, yeah? And it, and it, it just, it's just relaxed. There's no tension in the string, yeah? Mm. And that's what it is. That's the hanging power. And so when you come in contact, you shouldn't be tense. You shouldn't be rigid. You know, people, you know I've seen lots of people do pray madness, and it's very rigid. Uh, you've got to let go of this. This is just a level. You have to go for it, but it's like a maybe like a, a wet towel hanging on your arm. That's that's like hanging down, and then at the very moment, that's why you have to be soft for the game to explode out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, another couple of questions, Sifu. Um, in the absence of a training partner. This is from Zai Zai. Uh, what do you suggest to replace Chai Sao? Uh, Chi Sangha, one arm Chi Sangha, and also 
there's a training apparatus you can use with bamboo. So you can you can get bamboo and you can put it on a on a support and you can press into the bamboo like this. So you can try and emphasize your gongs with your tip up gong and, and your, your bridge arm. So you can use that. Also uh, uh, big sang gong uh, or bat sang gong is to lift up the logs. You can use all these, you know, and also all the different training gongs as well. You know, the, the chai so is only one aspect of so much. Yeah, it's important, but it's not the B end and end all. Oh, that's great. Some good questions coming, Sifu. Um, uh, we'll try and get through them all. I've okay. Got, uh, I've got one um, yeah. that's been asked uh, about the Fao Chum Tong To. Can you um, just explain a little bit about that? Float, swallow, sink, and spit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how, how does how does um, how does uh, Chao Ga implement it? Okay, easy. Well, if I, I just talk from first form, maybe because people can understand. But if you say, for instance, I punch, it's a spitting, yeah? I sow hill, and then when I do this, I breathe in. And as I breathe in, it's a float. float. Mm. Then I begin to swallow. And as I swallow, then I sink it. Then I turn mark and then I punch. The cycle. Yeah, that's it. So it's like that. It's simple as that. And float and sink. Float and sink is, is the uh, sorry, uh, sink and spit is the is the is the good part because you bang 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 up and down up and down or mm. in, in another uh, Another question that um, has come up is: um, Have you had any um, training in in any other southern praying mantis arts such as juklam or or anything else? And do you see any any differences between them? I've never done any other uh, any other southern mantis. Um, the, one, one question which taps into this as well is uh, the kind of similarities, differences between Jalga and Bakme. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, look. I mean, if you went back to China, you'd probably find that maybe maybe they were so closely related they belong to each other. I mean, basically, it's Hakka Hakka Kung Fu, you know. So um, if you know where Lao Soi was in his village in Baiyun, yeah, uh, you know, but main master, I think Joan Lai Chun, I think his name's, I'm not sure. Uh, but he is living maybe a few okay. miles away. <laughs> so it's all related, you know. Mm. All right, Sifu, uh, from El Snappy, you're backed into a corner. You've got no time to think or assess your opponent. What do you do instinctively? Then again, you're backed into a corner. You've got no yeah. time to think or assess your opponent. What do you do instinctively? Uh, well, I mean, only from experience. I can only tell you from experience, but uh, I've always used the gal for it. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sibu, uh, from Fred Bland. Mantis hands have unique features distinct from other Chinese arts. Are mantis feet unique in any ways? Um, I, th I think I think collectively the Hakka martial arts have have this similar. Mm. So uh, I don't think one style can say has distinctive. It has differences, but it's not distinctive. So I think that um, all the Hakka martial arts have a similar to kind of content. So and that. The the, can you say, say something about the Hakka footwork? It's it's um, shorter and um, more and and rapid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, step it. Now, well, you know the first one is mass steps. You yeah. Must mass step. Yeah. Subol. 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 Uh, mass steps or rat yeah. steps. Is is this important? I don't see many people doing now. You know, actually. Right. I, people do steps I mean to give an example I mean like uh, I see people do I'm not complaining about people but um, <laughs> I see people do like this you know what I mean well the thing is grandmaster said ah, ah, come out 
really fast. Mm. You know, slow. So how, if you don't do things, if you do things slow all the time, you're going to be slow, I think. Have, yeah. have you seen, have you seen much? Doing things slow, doing things slow is not wrong. It's emphasizing. But when you come round, you have to bam. And that's what, one thing I've always seen on grandmas, which I don't see so much today. I don't know why. People are just turning around slowly and doing this and then doing that. It's, all, it's, like, it's like it's slowed up. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that to do with the understanding of what the technique, the, the technique that's been emphasized is? But the thing is, if, you, if you're doing any form, don't matter what martial art you're doing, if you don't understand every technique that in the form, even though it's a form, you don't have to do forms. I mean, I've seen people, I've got people at my school that don't do forms very good, but they can, they can fight. So let's, let's make a difference here. Yeah. However, if you do do a form, whatever form that may be, whatever martial art, is, you must understand every technique in that form, what it's for. Because you, then you can emphasize what you're doing and what you're seeing. But if, you, if, you, if you're doing enough form, and I don't, I don't know what this bit is, I know that bit, I don't know what that, then it's a waste of time, it's a dance. Mm. Sivi, can you explain a little bit about the um, turtle back, the, uh, the rounded back, and why it's important? Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, you're, it becomes like a shield. Uh, developed through all the gums. So if you, you can really feel it sometimes, especially with the, the different maneuvers, you know, the whole gong, open, closing, here, all the development in the back. I mean, obviously, I, I like to show the exercises, but that's how you develop it. And again, you can put it back into your first form once you understood it. Oh, wow, fantastic. And it, it, it's true what they say, everything does seem to... Then you condition it, right? So you do the... Uh, big boy. Uh, big boy, that's it, big boy. Bash back, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sifu, do you have um, any, any information on, on, on Lao Shoi's interactions with other Kung Fu masters and how it would have influenced uh, Southern Praying Mantis? Any training or fighting? Um, yeah, I mean, as I said, he, he, he had lots of friends from different martial arts, according to Grandmaster. You know, I asked Grandmaster many times many questions, and then with people he was explaining this, and then with other people, oh, no, no, no. Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, he, he had the interactions with a couple of other martial arts, such as Lee Gar. Um, Lee Gar is another, is another, another high-class system. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, so he had interactions. Well, sure, I, I don't think it's possible not to, you know. Uh, mm. You know, it's like, I, uh, you know, I have interactions with other martial arts. And, you know, but, uh, you know, I've only done Southern Mantis, Jalga, I've never done anything. Jalga Mantis. So um, of the of the Chinese Southern Mantis systems. Um, with that, Sifu, um, doing Chao Ga, uh, Southern Praying Mantis. What's your what's your thoughts on the current kind of discussions around sort of Chao Ga and Chu Ga and Chao Ga not being a real the real name or the real art, and that Lao Shui was actually Chu Ga and Yip Soi. It, 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 it shouldn't be called Chaga, it should be called Yipsoi, Yipgar or something. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if you spoke to Grandmaster today, he would be furious. To, even to suggest that you would call it Yipgar. Um, you know, Grandmaster was said, said many times, he's Chaga. He was adamant, Lao Soi was Chaga. I know there's a lot of discussions. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter whether it's Zhao Ga, Zhu Ga, Duk Lung, or some other martial art. Do you understand your martial art? Can you use your martial art? I and mean, if, you're, if you're adamant that um, you, you are the best, then improve it. Were you ever able to um, meet or interact with any other students of Lao Soi? Uh, not quite. Um, the only other student is uh, Seking. Seking. Mm. Oh, uh, wait, Jubal Ma. What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, Jubal Ma. 
Yeah, Jubal Mark, of course. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time ago. But the last time I saw Jubal Mark, which is of the Jugar Mantis, was, I think, well, I, I first saw him probably about, I don't know, I don't know somewhere in the early 80s and, and the last time in the 90s. So, um, yeah, I mean, he was a big man. And uh, and I saw a demonstration by the Jugar Tom Lock. I mean, they have similar things, um, but uh, yeah, that's the only interaction I had. Great, thank you. That came from Arthur in New York, who who's come and trained with us a couple of times, Ifu. Um, another question from, from Simon. How useful has dim muck been in real situations? And can you talk a little bit more around the dim muck, dim muck in Mantis overall? Oh, uh, I see. Well, very bold. I mean, you know, dim muck is a specialized subject. Um, sometimes it's not easily taught, um, and also is it useful in, in modern day society where you want to hurt someone? I used to practice it a lot years ago, but I, I don't do it so much now, although I still go over references it. Um, but actually you can apply it in all your techniques if you want to, not just, not just punching. People think that the mark is used only in punching, but actually it's used in pressing, it's used in twisting, it's used mm. in grabbing, not just punching. We shouldn't think. And secondly, you can use only only the dim yurt, only in certain aspects where you have control of the person. If, you, if you're just going to punch, you might as well just hit the face and the ribs where it's, where it's easy. Because in the first instance with a fight, it's going to be a, a confrontation of moving and that. But when you have control, that's when you use it. Okay, Sifu, uh, a question coming from Yan, uh, our good friend Yan. Uh, hi guys, Sifu, of the Heigong that is within Chao Ga, what would you prescribe as a course for those with disabilities? Oh, I see. Oh, that's a different one. Um, well, I, I, you know, the only person that I have taught who had a disability was a chap called, uh, his name is Steve, and he suffered from a heart attack at one time in his life. So, um, he can still do the exercise. It depends on what the disability is. I don't really know what the disability is. So, uh, but he, he, he got very strong on his, um, his left arm. Very strong. Because <laughs> his right arm, he had a heart attack on it. So, uh, but he got very strong on the left arm. So there's, there's, there's always something that will get stronger. Does that make sense? Yeah. So whatever your disability is, other parts of your body seem to develop even a much more higher and acute awareness. Uh, we have a question from uh, Nick, Nick Lewilwin. I don't know how to pronounce it, I apologize. Um, which, uh, which shit da should be used for, for what? So the difference between an oil and the alcohol based? All oh, right. Well, the dip da, the da jiao. Mm. Oh, there's so many. Um, well, the oil base is good for old injuries, um, especially the uh, eight herb um, resin formula. It's uh, uh, very good for old injuries and stubborn injuries if you've got them, especially for you know tendon problems and joint problems. Um, you can use the 25 herb dip jar, which is very good for general bruises. And also, I gave it to you the other week. You can drink a lot. Also, I don't drink. I'm but, uh, however, you can you can take this for health and cleaning out the system and helping your internal system to become strong. Because if you're doing a lot of training, especially mantis, there's a lot of conditioning that goes with it, and obviously there will be some form of uh, uh, breaking of blood vessels, maybe, and, and bruising quite a lot more than most other Chinese martial arts. You know, some just do forms, and that's okay. You know, but Mantis, there's a lot of two-man stuff. Because there's a lot of two-person two stuff, I should say. Um, then, therefore, it's, uh, you need a lot of uh, jowls and internal remedies. So that, that will be helpful. Yeah, so which one, which one, are, which one I would choose? Oh, well, there's, there's several, depending on what you, want to, what you want to do. I mean, if you just want one for health, you can use the 25. If you want the one for conditioning, you can use the 36. Lao soy formula, and if you've got some problems internally, you can use the Tieta pill, the Tita one, such as uh, seven 
seven fragrances, yeah. which is seven fragrances doesn't mean it's con- it only means it contains seven seven herbs that are used for pain in that forty two herbs. I think I think it's forty two herbs. I'm not sure. I'll have a look. <laughs> We've got a question from Sean Connolly, our good friend in Ireland. In the old movies, students would get the master drunk to get his secrets. As you don't drink, how do we go? How do we go about getting this? <laughs> well, I don't drink, so I'm lucky, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> that answers that one. <laughs> uh, we've got. Another... I'm telling, I'm telling, telling, him, I'm telling him he's got to feed the little leprechauns at the back of his garden. <laughs> Oh dear. Sifu, um, uh, did you learn all the dit dar and Chinese medicines from uh, Grandma Ip Shui? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, another question from Yan. Which Hei Gung exercise and herbs would strengthen the kidneys? Which Hei Gung? Hap Gung is good. Yeah. And any, any particular herbs or, or, uh, or uh, recipes? Yeah, uh, the herbs, it depends on your condition, really. Uh, but if you want to strengthen up the uh, knees of the back, <coughs> you can use, uh, you know, I, I say in Cantonese because I, I try and remember it in Mandarin, but in Cantonese it's called Ngapei, uh, strengthen the knees and the back. Nao uh, sa, nao means cow, sa means knee, so you can use that to strengthen the knees. Um, it depends on whether you have a drying problem in your body, so you need moisture, so you can use tap jong. Uh, jong is uh, euconomer bark, so euconomer bark uh, and um, uh, anticapanics root. You can use these three herbs, these are very good, but it depends on your condition, so it's always good to know your condition and let other people decide what, what they think it is rather than your own mind concocting that you might need this or that. Uh, uh... Another question uh, from Ben. A portion of Western martial arts have a growing focus on grappling, Thai boxing, and MMA. Mm. How do you see Chao Gao being used in these situations? Oh, well, very much the way it is used now. I mean, probably in the next, probably in the next person who becomes UK representative of Chao Gao, maybe you sh- they should take it a little bit further. Maybe they should introduce some, um, uh, you know, competitions where where we where it can be promoted, where it can be pushed, and where it can go a little bit higher than what it is now. I mean, I've done my job of teaching lots of different people around the world and around the globe. So now, maybe maybe someone else needs to now invigorate it more and 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 put it maybe competitions, maybe if they want to. Obviously, martial art is more than just competition. But I can't just say, you know, that's the be end and end. But there'll always be people who want to use the martial art, the, the, you know, the sort of like um, for competitions. I mean, I've I done competitions back when I was in my 20s and whatever. Um, in those days, it was uh, semi-contact. Um, so, yeah, so maybe the next step is, is to incorporate, you know, the, the sanda and the, the that kind of uh, Li Tai rules, you know, you know Li Tai rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you get grapple. I think, you know, there's no harm in it. I mean, obviously, but don't let it be the, the sole focus of your, your life, you know. Um, sure. Get into it and that. I'm going to just put my back in, so I knew this would happen. Anyway, can you see this still? Yeah, yeah, I can see you. So, Sifu, um, how is the UK martial arts scene, this is from Simon Moore, how is the UK martial arts scene in the UK nowadays compared to the 70s and 80s? Um... Well, obviously, everybody's focused on MMA now, and in the 70s, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, uh, teaching of the old traditional martial arts that to sort of like seem to be less these days. That's the big difference. And one from our good friend Reto um, Why did Grandmaster never used to unicorn dance? Was it because he never, learned, he never learned unicorn dance? Okay, that, that answers that one. Um, another question uh, There are many mentions of Iron Shirt in the Kung Fu arena. Hmm. What exactly is Iron Shirt, and how is that different to say body conditioning in various Kung Fu styles or Hei Gongs? Okay, so this it's very important. This is because you can just condition your body 
hit it and smash it or whatever and get used to the pain. But that's not iron shirt, that's just getting used to being pain, <laughs> being, yeah. being hurt, you know? But, um, yeah, so, but, the really is, uh, but it really is if you do a lot of breathing, you will build up like a pot of air. And this, this will help you to resist the pain as well. So it's um, conditioning, conditioning is one aspect, but it's yeah. not. It's not. If you do it all the time, then it can be damaging. The internal and external aspects of it, the internal breathing and the external conditioning form. Yeah. I'm sure. But if you, if, you do, if you do a lot of the breathing and a lot of the gaunt, yeah, you will feel, I just, like I said earlier, do you remember what I said? The feeling of, of, the, of the arms being wrapped in some kind of mold. Yeah, yeah, like you've got to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's like putting like, on the iron that's shirt. What keep, that's what keeps me going, you see, you know. So that's that's you know that's what keeps me going. Oh, that feeling, that that, yeah. that that kind of um, you know. And I think if people don't feel it, I think if people just go to the martial arts school, do a bit of training, do a form, sweat a bit, and go home, it, it mm, you need to do a little bit more than that, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Sifu, uh, one from Abdul. Uh, he trains us, you know him very well. What big was the lesson? <laughs> big Abdul. What was the lesson? Big yeah, Big Abdul. What was yeah, the lesson? <laughs> what was the lesson you most enjoyed learning with uh, Grandmaster Employee? One lesson. What was the, your What was your favourite? I, I, I have many. I have so many. Um, but and this might reflect on everything. Uh, one day. Um, we were training, you know, and uh, anyway, my sibling said to me, oh, they said, uh, all you need to do is tie sail doi jong. I've said this many, many times, you know. Mm. Anyway, so <laughs> tie sail doi jong, son, that's all you need to do. Oh, okay, okay. I, you know, and I was kind of agreeing. And Grandmaster came out of the bedroom and walked over. He said, what are you talking about? You know, and in Chinese, he, you know, explained. And then there was an almighty swear. You know, and I thought, oh, what's going on here now? And then he came back, and when he came back, um, he said, oh, Paul, attack me. Now, Grandmaster, um, I try and, try and do this if I can. So, because I, um, I don't want my battery to go off. So, anyway, so Grandmaster said to me, so he said, oh, oh, oh Paul, how would you attack me? Like, so, that position. So, I wanted to learn. And I, I knew which way to attack him, but I wanted to learn. So I just lowered myself. And I, so I would attack him on the side that he had his arm out. And he goes, no, no, no. <laughs> That's when I began to learn, to learn uh, swimming dragons. Young so swimming dragons. So at that point, technique is important, he said. If you can't move, you can't fight. Yeah. Simple as that. Um. Any notable lessons from other people in the Chowgar family other than um, uh, Grandmaster Ipshoy and uh, uh, Sifu Ipchikon? Yeah, of course. I, I'm, they've, all, they've all had a great influence on me. How can I say not? Uh, even from uh, Lee Tim Loy and uh, Choi Si Wing and others, and um, even some unknown people we don't know, known as Francis Lung. Um, he used to teach. He used to teach Dal Guy Tom Long in London back in the seventies. He was one of the first, actually. Mm. Um, so obviously, uh, yeah, everyone gave me gave me a, 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 a different different aspect and, and a lesson in life, you know, whether it's based on this or that. But everyone, everyone for sure. You trained you trained with uh, Ella with uh, Ipchi yeah. Kang's sister as well a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes she would say, come on, let's spar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, no kidding. Yeah. 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 And she was fast, I'm yeah. telling you. And the last, the last, I said, you know, when I saw her, like, um, next time, she said, how come you're not training no more? She said, you know what? My husband, I, I mean, I, I, I don't really want to be stronger than my husband. So I can't. <laughs> he should have trained too. No. See if it when you were learning the system, uh, yeah. what aspect of training Chowgar did you find the most challenging? Most challenging? Uh, uh, keep my elbow in. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, certain aspects, but yeah, sure. I mean, uh, 
keeping the elbow in, keep you know pushing yourself through the pain and the struggle and the galtroy and all that. I remember doing galtroy with Master you, you go, oh, you know, oh, I said, what is this? You know, hurting my hand. Oh, bang, <laughs> bang, bang. You know. <laughs> Why? Uh, on from that because even that was, was so hard for me when I was learning it's still hard for me to even now training but why is it so important why is there so much emphasis on keeping this elbow in and this is elbow power it's to develop the forearm it's because the close in system needs you need the forearm strength to kind of cope with a close in confrontation and to develop the heavy the heavy elbow power so that the bridge can stay up and be, yes, and still you know, have you've, got to, you've got to keep your bridge yeah. up, you know, your shoulders have got to be strong, your forearms have got to be strong. You know, everything, actually, is everything. It's not just one thing. Actually, if you do tie yourself properly, you train your ribs as well. Yes, yeah. It's not like you just train your arm. Mm. Sorry if I keep moving because I, I've got this tied to the... Uh, no, that's fine, Zivu. Uh, as long as you can keep going, that's great. Uh, a question from Adam Tarnett. Who created the Chongs? Chao Anam or Lao Soi? Or maybe even uh, were any added by Ipsoi? Yeah. Who created the Chongs? Mm. Well, obviously, I mean, they were there. I mean, I can't answer that because, um, you know, Chongs are just Chongs. I mean, wow. I mean, who created the Chongs? I mean, Chao Anam. But then again, did Chao Anam create them or did the Sim Si, uh, the Sim uh, yeah. the, the head yeah. one? Because the head monk was there as well, you know. Yeah. You need two people, doesn't it? You can't. If you, you can't have two man training without with just one of you. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many. Uh, Grandmaster. I mean, Grandmaster said there's some sort of thirty six jobs, and I've tried to list them all. Is that piece of paper on the wall? Yeah, I left them. So um, you know, I might miss a few here and there, um, whatever. But um. There are very, and also there are very, very different, different variations of each job. So obviously that's, that's another thing to look into. Uh, a question from Andrew Small. Can you explain the best location to do Heigong? For example, should you aim to do it outside where there is fresh air or inside? Uh, well, if you do it outside, it's best because um, especially if it's, if it's not windy, you don't want to do it in a windy place, but do it outside in the morning. Morning time. Morning time is good. Um, uh, a question from Fred Bland. Is Southern Praying Mantis a good choice for small people? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, because it's got fast footwork. Jamon Arm was supposed to be small, but I mean, I don't know how small. But he yeah. was supposed to be small. He was supposed to be fast. He was supposed to be strong. So, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep, sorry. But why you develop properly? You know, that's the thing, you know. Some yeah. people have done it. I know people have trained and then still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yip yeah, himself and, uh, and if she can, and not big guys, they're, they're very small as well. Oh, grandma, yeah, Grandma's yeah. is a great example. I mean, yeah. he, I mean, I never saw, need seen, met someone as tough around here, especially his age. He was already a, a, yeah. in advanced age when I first met him. I mean, the first met, I first met him in 75, I think it was in, in, in London. I mean, I didn't know too much then. I was only a kid. But, um, mm. you know, but he was already, I don't know how old he was then. He was probably in his 60s then. So. I remember when he came over in, in 99, when, you did the, when we you know, did the big demo. So, but mm. he got off the plane and, the, and came to a class in Covent Garden, was it? And the first thing he did was go around and let everyone hit him in the ribs and grab his throat. And, you know, he was well, maybe 85 then or something, you know? Yeah. Um, just incredibly impressive. Yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, hard, no it's hard to, to explain to people until you get someone that's that tiny and you hit them and bounce off, you know? It's like yeah. uh, an eye-opener. So, Zivu, uh, a question from Mike Cutler. What was the hook for you with this system? What was it about it that made you fall in love and dedicate your time to it? Um, uh, the first time, well, obviously, I first started karate first. Uh, Koa Shinghai karate. I was 15. No, 13. So I was 13 when I started Koa Shinghai. Yeah. And, I, and then I thought, oh, I want to do Chinese martial arts. And then someone said, oh, there's a martial arts school in this dress. So I decided to travel up there. And so I, I saw... People practicing, I thought, what? 
with these people. They all like look strong. So uh, this is this. Uh, I'm going to try this and this. <laughs> and secondly, I wanted to do something a little bit different from karate, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I know it's all the different people there. There was like strong. There was lots of Chinese in those days learning. I think there's a picture of me somewhere, uh, probably you know in Hong Kong somewhere. Would be training with them. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, the last time I saw it. it was about 20 or 30 years ago was there something particular about the style of the training that made you like think yeah this is yeah, the one I mean, you can see the, you can see some people really you know that when they're training it's all the body was like wow you know this it was emanating power you know I noticed this so even, at, even that young age I mean what did I know at 15 let's be honest yeah. <laughs> uh, super cool. Um, I thought, you know, 15, I thought I could beat up 20 men, so. Uh, <laughs> Still can. <laughs> yeah. Super cool. There's a, a question from Alex Liu. Uh, what is your favorite weapon in, in Jaga? Uh, the Guan Pole. Yeah. Okay. Um, a question from uh, Didier Fagier in France. Uh, can we use wooden dummy in Chowgar and can we use all techniques with it? Yeah, you can do, I suppose. I mean, I've never really thought about it much, you know. Um, the only thing I say is that you, you always move around the dummy. You know, you only go from side to side. Hmm. So you need, with Mantis, you need to push forward. Um, interesting question. How would Southern Praying Mantis practitioner fend off a muscular aggressor or well, multiple muscular aggressors that have a high tolerance to pain? For example, let's say the individual is on drugs. <laughs> uh, just to hit him over the head with a hammerhead. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, look, I mean, with these drugs, I mean, people can be aggressive. I mean, it just depends how you're going to deal with it yourself, how well you've trained. I mean, you know, if you've been doing Southern Mantis for a couple of months, when obviously you might be overwhelmed. But if you've been training properly, then obviously it shouldn't be a problem. Um, thank you, Sifu. Uh, a question from Gabor. It's a long one, so uh, I hope you get all of it. What does it mean, real? Because many people say they practice the real Kung Fu or the real Chao Ga. But I think the real Kung Fu and real Chao Ga have to change and improve. I think Sifu Paul is a real guru. Uh, sorry, thank you. But many people criticize Sifu Hung. He has changed many things, but his power is real. So I think we should respect each other, and that could be the best if we try and improve each other together. What do you think? Do you want me to repeat yeah, that? Um, I mean, the thing is, yeah, sure. No, 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 it's fine. Um, you know, I trained with Hung back in, in the 80s, you know. And, um, and you still talk to him, he, right? He was very powerful then. I mean, he's a very powerful individual. I mean, he's a he's a classic example of uh, you know being away from Hong Kong for so many years and training on his own in um, Venezuela, I think it is. Yeah. Where he become he developed his system. I mean, you know, I don't I don't criticize any I don't criticize any I don't criticize any person that has his own method or his own own, own way of doing things. If it works, then um, that's okay. But how does how did he one get to that position? Or how does one, then you must teach that part that you've got to that position. You can't teach them the bit that you've got to. You must teach them the basics from what you learned first. You can't, mm. you know, if I developed into a, some powerful individual, I can't teach you what I got up here. I have to show you this first. So there's a, there's a process in which you step up all the time. Uh, and a follow-up question from, from uh, Reto. At which point should we no longer call the art Chao Ga when some masters change the art and create new forms and so on? Say that again? Well, you, when uh, we yeah. call it Chao Ga? Well, at which point do we no longer call it Chao Ga? Is that, do you see that happening? When some masters may change the art or create new forms and so on? Hmm. Some people do. I mean, obviously, they, it's already happened, doesn't it? Um, it's up to them. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's what got me here uh, to this point or what got this person to this point. So if this, this, if this bus got you to this point, why should I 
stop that bus getting anybody else to that point. So it's easy to to sort of like, if you want to call it another name, that's up to you. But you should always keep the bridge open for other people. I don't mm. think the uh, the bridge should be burned when you when you pass it yourself. Um, another question from Jan. Go, he's asking loads. Keep going, mate. What is the most overlooked part of Chaga? Overlooked part. Mm. Overlooked part. Mm. That's a. Uh, I don't know. I mean, again, individuals themselves make those decisions, and I think that uh, you know, if if you overlook certain aspects that are that are not you're not emphasising on the key fundamental principles, I think it can uh, you, you it may slow your progress. So that could be you could overlook that. You know, that's a possibility. Um, uh, another question: How many forms? are there actually in Chaoga? And what, is, what are the most important forms other than Sambo Jin? Well, for me, well, I go from me. I mean, I like, um, I like Jaw Kill. Yeah. I like Bo Sim Sao. I like Pung Long Ge. I also like Se Mun Sao, Four Gay Hens, uh, Mo Ying Sao. Um, these are the forms that I, I, I enjoy training. Uh, I also like to do the Kung's. How many forms there are? Well, uh, as I know, those forms are essential. There's the basic forms, which are just to able to just your techniques uh, and, and your body shape, which is U kill, Pai kill, Ping kill. But then there are other forms that you need for developing your skill in movement and fighting. Mm. It doesn't mean to say if you learn them, you can fight, but what it means is it's giving you a chance to step up so you can practice these skills. In, a, in, in say context of your your daily training routines and maybe your sparring or whatever. Uh, a question from Chris Sharalumbus: What percentage and what form of qi gong is incorporated into chao gao? Well, uh, yeah, these um, there's a, obviously samuji, also yi kap samuji, sam kap samuji. It's also a Tong Long Gong Excel. These are the forms that have this that Qi Gong. But then again, there's many sets of Qi Gong from the Hao Gong, Dip Bak Gong, uh, you know, the Risk Gong. So there's there's many. And they can be classed as forms. Mo Jiao, you know, Mo Jiao, you remember Mo Jiao? Yeah. Yep. Mokam, Mokam. As, a, as a percentage, do you think it's, uh, do you think it's um, half and half, half, half of the fighting forms and half of the guns or, or uh, oh, I see, I see what I mean, sorry, I, yeah. I misunderstood, yeah, 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 no, that's, that's fine, I mean, yeah, probably around about uh, 20%, 30% of, is all Qigong stuff, yeah, Qigong, yeah. a lot of it, yeah, yeah, um, a message from Simon, uh, what, what point, at what point should the soft side of the art be trained, also, is there a type of, um, Qi Sao or tempting hands? In there's two two parts of the question there, but yeah. the um, first part is at what point do you incorporate the soft training? Do you have to build up to that and then incorporate the soft training? Uh, the soft part, the soft part of the training comes when you've developed at least some areas of the non game, because uh, as I said, you, to get to the game game, you must develop the softness and the and the soft. And the, and the, like what we say, sometimes the other martial arts call it Qi Sao or whatever. There is the, uh, the, the Ba Dung Dung Qi Sao, which is the sensitivity training exercises, which is a, a sensitivity drill to right. get your reflex in both blocking with your legs and, and blocking with your arms. Right, 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 right. And, and, and most of all, moving forward. Uh, you know, that's why this technique teaches you to go off to the left or right and move forward. Um, it just it's just it's just not a stationary chi kung uh, sort of, uh, sticky hand type thing keeping yeah. still. You have to no go to the right or left and move forward. And that's why and the other person moves back or not necessarily moves back, moves to the side and deflects. Right. Interesting, yeah. Uh, a, a great question actually from Andrew Small. Sifu, do you see a time when you retire from teaching? Or will you continue teaching until it is physically impossible? Uh, all right. <laughs> now, I won't retire. Uh, that's full stop. 
And, um, you know, I may have to do the same thing. What, um, I forget his name, he's a karate master. He, where the students used to bring him on a stretcher, he used to train him. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we'll do that for you. I, I can't be tired. I cannot, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's not me. It's not me. Um, Unless something happens, but then, oh, well, you know. But actually, it's the first time in a couple of I'm, I'm actually healing my body, but I've done a lot of gardening and a lot of flowering on my land at the moment. Mm. So uh, you know, we're probably within the next couple of days, I will start in vigor and training again. But for a couple of weeks, I've just had a couple of days off because, uh, you know, just to just to get my body healed. <laughs> Too much grinding arm ties, so sparring. <laughs> There's a, an interesting an interesting question from Earl Snappy. He says he's got problems with his left side techniques. He's 54. Should he spend time improving his right side, his strong side, or should he? Uh, or should he spend time trying to strengthen the weaker side? His age is 74. 54. Oh, 54. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, he can, he can, how does he feel when he, when he trains one side or the other? He has to ask those questions and himself. Does he feel that he's able to use? Is there a general weakness? Is there an injury? You know, that, if he's having problems on his one side, then get mm -hmm. another person to actually... Uh, get it to make make it more sensitive so it becomes responsive to that side. Maybe he's got to do two man drums a little bit more. Yeah, focus. It depends how weak it is to build up that side anyway, so it's at least functional. Yeah. Have that answers for you, Mr. Snappy? Uh, so, um, oh, have we got a, a question from Alex Stiv in, in Greece, a, a student of, of John Haygood. Welcome, Alex. Good to see you. Hello everyone, I hope everyone is good. How much, how important is weapon training and how much of a decisive role does it play in someone's overall development? Yeah, weapon training can be an important aspect because uh, it can take a different level to your, to your movement. So yeah, weapon, weapon training is important. It, um, it's there for, for not just not just for strength training, but also to get you to move as well. You know, if you're doing some of the, the, the weapons forms, you, you'll notice there's a lot of footwork and there's a lot of movement. So these, these will help you. It's always good to train with a weapon as well, because, you know, as, as well, you're opening your wrist and your forearms. Yeah, so yeah. it's important. As I said, I like the pole, and there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of kick. Well, some pole forms uh, have the kicking. Yeah, so... Um, Yes, it's, it's, it's essential. Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy the uh, the heavy tiger fork training that we do with you. I mean, I find that... Yeah, sure. it, and it's, there's a lot of movement in it. So, yeah. you know, to build that about and being that heavy as well is important. And your favourite weapon is the pole, right, Sifu? Yes, yeah. at the moment. I mean, I might change in a couple of years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sifu, so there are some questions around challenge matches that you've had. So, did you have any challenge matches in Hong Kong? Uh, yes, in a roundabout way, yes. And can you talk about them or are there any... any, any yeah, skills? most of them were for testing challenges, you know, like as if to say, see how good I was, see how this and that. Sometimes I do this, sometimes it was based on, 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 on a little bit of reflex, sometimes a bit on, on strength training, that kind of thing. And I, was all, I was always, sometimes I was, I was always picked on, which I didn't mind because, you know, was, um, I didn't mind. I don't mind being picked on. <laughs> was, it quite, was, it, was it quite difficult um, in those days going to Hong Kong and... and, and, and yes, I mean, well, I mean, it was and it had its moments and it had its great moments. It's an experience, right? So, um, you know, and... If, if it doesn't kill you, it will make you grow stronger. As they say. <laughs> uh, and, and and what about in UK seafood? How, how did those challenge matches work out? I know in the seventies and eighties, there was a lot going on with different martial uh, arts. Because and... I was, a, you know, I was a different person then, you know. So I, I can't reflect what I used to do do then as to now. You know, it's just it was just you know fights I had and people, you know. Yeah. 
That's the fire, the fire of youth. <laughs> That's the fire yeah. of youth in your belly. Well, actually, the last one I had was about um, two weeks ago. <laughs> I think it was uh, four no, years ago, wasn't it, Sifu? Four years ago, was it? Eight years ago, was it? That's the last fight I really had, you know, so we'll see. <laughs> you know. um, so, Sifu, uh, another question from our good friend, Simon. How does the Mao Sun, Sun work apply in martial arts? Mao Sun. Mao Sun Da, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Mao Sun is the arts that uh, Grandmaster used to do. Um, incorporating the wafu and other things. Um, he didn't sort of blend it too much into it, but uh, uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's a long process of learning this kind of art. And um, you know, I remember a long time ago when um, I was in Hong Kong and we used to do the uh, Sun Da uh, just near. Um, Somewhere in Lion Rock Road, I think. I'm not too sure. Hmm. But anyway, I mean, they were used to bang. You know, the idea of sundown, they bang the floor. You know, you know they bang the floor and, and summon up the spirit, all this sort of thing, and uh, get the ghost to protect them. And sometimes they have to give a bit of them stars. But the problem is, is that if you if you don't do this, if you do this, sometimes there is a pain. And when Grandmaster spoke, he said, sometimes, sometimes they, they, they want something from you afterwards hungry ghosts so a lot of these people, yeah and, and some so it's it's a very it's a very touchy subject i mean but in terms of what grandmaster did he done the um the wafu for healing to give uh to heal, heal the people which he healed lots of different people over the years um and there's lots of stories i can say about what he what, he, what happens and what you know but um yeah I mean, Mao Sun is is a definitely a yeah, it's a touchy subject, it's, you know. And as being a devotee now, um, obviously, I, I don't go into that. You know. Mm. Uh, a question from Mike Cutler. I've had issues with my back in recent years, and no others have suffered too. Do you use anything other than mantis for back strength? If not, what is the best within mantis to strengthen the middle of your back in particular? or alternatives if you use them? Um, yeah, uh, well, there, there are, he probably needs more treatment if he's got a bad back. Perhaps he should have a look what's wrong first and then you can apply the appropriate method. I mean, if, 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 a, if a disc is pinching, yeah, say pinching the nerve, I mean, maybe, maybe if he does dip like all, it might make it worse. Oh, yeah. Could do, I don't know. I mean, one has to, I have to see the person. I have yeah, to. for sure. But do we have, um, do we have um, strengthening exercises specifically for back strength? Yes, yeah, I, I showed you earlier on. When you're curling your back and you bring yeah. it up. Oh, and yeah, sure. And you go back, jump back, and you crush. Oh, yes, I remember this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, fantastic. You have one for the legs, you know, up and down the legs. Yeah, and there are a number of, of gungs that are, that are used for strengthening different parts of the bodies. Um, and I feel lucky to have, have learned them from you. Um, Sifu, so um, a lot of people view mantis as a very kind of stiff art uh, and uh, the movement seems to be just forward and back. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this or as to why it's not like that? Um, especially in terms of yeah, in, in terms of that training, because it, it, I think um, uh, I get a lot of questions as to why we don't move about so much or why we don't have very intricate footwork. But from, from training with you, it, it is there. But uh, can you talk a little bit more about how you learned that or how it was, uh, how it was taught to you, uh, either from Grandmaster Ipsoi or? Hmm. Well, there's, there's one, one essential maneuver uh, called the Hall of Light Steps. I mean... Uh, and the Hall of Light Steps requires you to move left, right, back, round. And it's called the Hall of Light Steps because it's a beacon of light. You need to move your footwork. You need to, you need to emphasize on, on getting round the back of the person or to the side of the person. And as you've seen, I've shown many times these, these particular movements, both in not just forms, but also in johns. Um, I've showed these maneuvers. 
Um, but what people do is, uh, you know, is the straight line stuff. You know? So obviously that's what people see. Maybe because people don't want to show the rest of it, and so therefore they're reluctant to sort of like show these other things. Whereas myself, I don't want the system to, to die, so it's best I show. So it's, it's just straight line is just the beginning stuff. As I said, the first four forms are just straight line. If there's only four forms, like a lot of people say, then, you know, I don't know why this, this theory come out, but um, as far as I'm concerned, it's um, what Grandmaster said to me, and that's fine by me. And uh, there's more to it than just, just those four forms. Um, they're, straight, they're straight line forms, you know. Another, I mean, even, you know, even in the first form, is, even though it's a straight line, it's a gong form, it's a training gong form. Hmm. And the second one is single, a single gong form, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And so, Sifu, is the Hall of Light Steps a specific form, or is it more of a concept, or is it a mixture of both? It's a concept. Yeah, concept, you know. Basically, you, you, you go around in a circle, like, Bagua, yeah, but it, the, the, the movement is different from Bagua, but however, you go around. And at, at the four cardinals, you know, north, south, east, west, you make a, a manoeuvre and walk across and do the specific manoeuvres you need to do with, it, with your mind and focus as what you're doing and what with the footwork changing left and right. Sometimes, um, sometimes the, the technique is what, what went swimming dragons, like you open your arm out, and you leave yourself open, but it's a trap. This is one of the um, 25, 25, prin 25 or 24, 25 principles that um, about you know how the how the system works. You know, so I, I give them off the top of my head some of them, but you know, um, always aim at the important areas. That's the video. Um, always leave yourself open, but it's a trap. Number two, keep your head down. Number three, chin tao, uh, you know, chin in, I should say. Uh, game time game. Keep pursuing your opponent relentlessly, but don't be like a charging ball because you can easily be tricked. Use the power of your game to 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 shock the person. These are the uh, these are some of the uh, techniques. Cool. Use the waist bump. Yeah, there's 25 of them. Yeah, eyes like an eagle. I always say that as well. Yeah. Yeah, man. Put your yeah. head down, you know, focus properly. <laughs> and it does work, you know, it works. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's worked, it's well, it's worked for me. Bring up the spirit and raise the intent, the aggressive intent with the fierce eyes. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're already a fighter, you know, you like fighting, you know, it's going to be easy. The system's going to be easy for you. If you're yeah. not, then you just have to train. It, again, it depends on whether you feel yourself a fighter or not. Sivu, so, a question from Eddie Park. Uh, I recently had to take over a class. Do you have any advice for a new instructor? He's took over a class. Yeah, he's taking over a class. Do you have any advice as a new, a new instructor? Oh, you know, I mean, introduce yourself, you know, and just slog along. I mean, I think you will find these... Um, if he, as he gets, gains confidence, he would start to get to um, uh, get to know the people and just be just be straightforward. Mm. Be honest with the people, you know about you know, and be straightforward. Don't don't try to con people with fancy techniques and that. Teach them what is going to be good for self defence. Mm. That's what people will judge it on. No good doing a martial art for 20 years and then find out you can't, it doesn't work because all the techniques are just glorified dances, you know. So, um, a question from Gabor again. Um, what do you think are three main points or three main differences of Jalga between other styles? What, what would give it three main advantages of Jalga against other systems? Oh, I see. Uh, well, the body conditioning, the toughness, yeah, and the relentlessness to move in and finish the fight very quickly. Mm. And what's that? Two? I need one more. That's an ask. I don't bullshit. Right. I, I, I like that anyway. Uh, a a quick, a no bullshit. Yeah. yeah. A question uh, from Simon Moore. A question from Simon Moore. Do you have any plans? This is a great question. Do you have any plans to publish any more copies of your book or 
any other publications? Are you going to write another book? Yeah, I like to. I like to uh, do the Sansol book uh, again. You know, maybe maybe that might come in if we're still here. If you need a a, a partner yeah, for the photos, I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah, there. you can you can help me. You know, you just you know, I'll just. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, uh, there's a question from Bill, Bill Spraggs. Oh, okay. Hello, Bill. Did Grandmaster Ipsui have any stories about Bruce Lee? Oh. <laughs> about Chestnut, yeah. Yeah. Um, did I tell you the story? Have, yeah. Have you ever met? The cab driver? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, Grandmaster didn't talk about Bruce Lee that much, you know. He was well aware of him, obviously. But um, um, but uh, the, Bruce Lee has said that Grandmaster Yip Soy was a, a kung fu fighter, you know. That was in a taxi giving someone a lift. Who'd done Joe Gatong Long? He, he was a taxi driver and picked up Bruce Lee, apparently. You know? But that's the story, you know. But Grandmaster really didn't talk about Bruce Lee that much. Yeah. Thank you for that. He just, I, I remember right now, he said, ho, ho, Grandmaster doing, ho, ho, lazy long, ho, ho. That's it, just <laughs> like that. Yeah. Exactly like that, ho, ho, you know. <laughs> uh, Arthur says, uh, often teaching helps you learn and view lessons from a different point of view, and you might have some new epiphanies. Did that happen with you with lessons from Grandmaster Ipshoi? Did you have a certain aha moment? Yeah, absolutely. And I think they're still happening now. Can you, can you describe you know, one of those sometimes moments? I, sometimes I see things when I look back and I think, oh, why didn't I do that a long time ago? But it's a progression of, of development, you know, uh, you, especially, like, especially like in the concept of moving. You know, Grandmaster, you saw he always used to move. He was always moving, you know. Um, yes, he was always moving. Can you can you describe it? Can you remember any of those aha moments where it just suddenly clicked for you from something from Grandmaster? Yeah, sure. I mean, the one I just explained earlier about uh, swimming dragons. Um, one, uh, well, knowing about Hong Kong, and then I had a, I had a, a newspaper. I said, Seagong, you know, yeah, a newspaper, and there was uh, some photograph on there. I said, and I and I put my hand here on his head. Don't look at it. And then, he was like moving a, I oh, thought, shit. <laughs> so that was, you know, I realized how strong his neck was then, you know, like his head was oh. didn't really move. <laughs> and also another time, you know, uh, when he was staying in my, I had a flat in London many years ago, and uh, when Grandmaster came over, I put him in the flat, and he just looked at me, and he said to me one day, he said, oh, oh pull my foot. And I was, okay, so he ripped his stance and I couldn't pull his foot. I couldn't pull his foot. And also, and then other time, as, as you know, I said, people, he, he rolled up his sleeve, bite my hand, bite, bite my arm, so, um, and I, I couldn't bite it. <laughs> I couldn't bite it, it was like, oh. <laughs> so, that, that, when it's just so pumped. Yeah, Ipchi Kung has demonstrated I mean, that. You know, I, I have great, great memories of, you know, I mean, obviously it's just like the, uh, the Wafu, you know, the Wafu. I always say, Sikong, can you teach me Wafu? Oh, yeah, very hard. In his, his English voice, yeah. very hard, very hard. Sikong, please, please. And I kept on doing it. So anyway, one day we was um, cleaning the altar, you know, it's still in Hong Kong. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, uh, there's a little box from his grandfather because, you know, Wafu, he learned from his grandfather. He didn't learn it from Lao Soi, he learned from his grandfather. His grandfather stayed in the Silang Temple. So anyway, we packed, packed, cleaned it, uh, well, I, cleaned it, I should say, painted it, da, 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 da. and then I went to sleep that night. Next minute, I don't know what time it was, maybe four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I, uh, I've all... Oh, hey son, nah. he said, hey son, make it up, get out of the house, what's the matter, what's the matter? My, my grandfather going round and round in the room. <laughs> I said, okay, he said, we never cleaned the, uh, the box, which is from his grandfather, he had something from the Siulang temple. 
Yeah. So I had to get up and paint and clean it, and you know, and it, everything was all right. So those stories I also remember, you know, like very. <laughs> but that, um, yeah, I mean, there's many, there's many. I remember when we were we were we were in Hong Kong. I think Alex and myself and we were staying at uh, Si Gong's house and he would wake up first thing, super early in the morning. He would call us all very lazy and he would do, he would turn on the radio with the, with the prayers and he, oh. would, do the pra- he would do the prayers and then he would do some, like, uh, he, I saw him do the sitting down uh, uh, Qigong and we mm. watch him and then he, he showed us that. That was some great memories. Um, yeah. Yeah, of course, you, you know, simple things, the little things. I mean, yeah. I do there's so many things I, I, I remember, you know. Just... Sifu, so we have a question from uh, Simone in, in Italy. He says, ciao, greetings from Italy. Hello. He said, can you talk a little bit more about Bol Simsal and, Bol uh, Simsal. and, and, and uh, what it teaches you and the importance of it? Okay, so Bol Simsal teaches you to hit the right areas of the body. One of the, one of the uh, principles for Talga one of the, the 25, is always hit the important parts. So Bol Simsal teaches you that. And it teaches you to understand where those points are. That's the, the rule of Bol Simsal. Bol Simsal means searching for the insect or cicada. Yeah. So obviously that noise at night where it's like this, you're, where is it? Is it here? Is it there? So Bol Simsal is like that. And it's a, they have forms where they like, Crafty, you know, so you go here, you go there, and you go under that kind of thing. That's what Bolt himself teaches. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, Sifu, I won't keep you in it much longer. Thank oh, you for your yeah. time. I know it's gone very quickly and we started a little yeah. bit late. So we've got a couple more questions. Um, okay. We've got a question from uh, Simon again, and he's asked some great questions. So I am thankful for that. Which other martial arts masters did you admire within your journey? Um, there's, I, I think it's not fair to, to mention just one or two, but mm. I mean, all of them have a, a, a specific quality, um, no doubt about it, you know, I mean, uh, the journey's been long, but um, all of them have a specific quality. Um, I, 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 I won't, make, if I mention one, it's not nice because yeah. there's something. I understand. Thank you, Sibu. A, a follow-up question: Did you do you find? Do, have you found any similarities uh, between the arts that you've made you think? Oh, that's from Chao Gao. Oh, that's in Calorie, or that's the same. Or it, yeah. Is it? Well, you know, like in the Mantis, you've got the Kam Jin Sao. Kam Jin Sao, you know Kam Jin Sao. Let me just. Uh, okay, I've just opened the. I've only got that. Uh, Kam Jin Sao. Is this? Yeah, is this? Yes. Okay, from Jin Sao. That's similar to the Yin Yi, Sing Yi. Yeah. You see? I remember oh. also um, uh, when I was training calorie with you as well, there were certain um, two mandrels or certain movements where you said it's the same. They have this in yeah, Chao cool. as well. I mean, when I was in India, you know, I was doing the, um, I was doing the, uh, what they call it? Uh, sorry, just because um, my phone. In India, so if it's no, it's, it's perfect, Zivi. As long as we can hear, okay. it's great. So there are some some maneuvers um, that are very similar, and also the breathing maneuvers where you put your palms together and you do, you know, two man two man breathing exercises with yeah. each other. This is in India as well. And if you know, I mean, I I said to myself, well, maybe there's a connection somewhere. Just like when I done. Um, done the Hall of Light steps under Seagull. Um, I wanted to know if there's any difference between this into the Bagua. So uh, this is one reason why I decided to look at Bagua as well. So I've done Swimming Dragons Bagua because Swimming Dragons in, in Mantis as well. Mm. And so I decided to find out whether there's any similarities, but it actually there's quite, quite some differences, some similarities, but quite some differences. Um, a question from Sam Porter. What do you, if you can, if you're able to answer this, what do you feel are the main differences between uh, Chao Ga Tong Long and Chuk Lam? Chuk Lam. I mean, I mean, I've seen some some big variations of Chuk Lam. Uh, the Chuk Lam that I've seen in, uh, 
the United States seems somewhat different to the Hong Kong Juklam. The Hong Kong Juklam looks like Mantis Butt May kind of thing, whereas the Juklam that I see in the in, uh, United States is kind of different, you know? Mm. So uh, that's what I noticed there. So uh, there are some similarities, um, but uh, definitely um, Joe Guy has, has the conditioning side of it much more. That's what I've seen, anyway. And also, Sifu, uh, a question from Arthur. You mentioned Sing Yim. Uh, we've heard that Ip Shoy had a high regard for their Kung Fu. Could you expand more on that? Uh, well, because one time he had uh, some Xing Yi master uh, had a little um, they had a little test of each other's skill back in I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. No, not 20 or 30 years ago, back in the 70s, I think, sorry. So that's, that's why he had high regard. And he, the person that he, was, that he met was very good. Fantastic. Um, I think we've covered pretty much most of the questions that people have asked. I mean, there is pretty some much. more coming in. Simon, Simon did put one thing there. He said, any, any chance of new video series? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time i done one there was uh, back in 90... The last one i done was in 94, 95. So but when people oh, see me, they say, oh, you must have aged quick. <laughs> yeah, Sagitt Sagittarius Productions you know, presents. And obviously, as you get older, you improve in different ways. So yeah. obviously, uh, you know, I, I can explain a lot more things better through my endeavour and grace of God. I've understood a lot more. Yeah. Great. And if you do the martial art properly, then you will improve. But if you, you know, you you will see that happen. Deeper into the well. Yeah. Deeper if you spend more time. Mm. Paul, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's been fantastic. I think we've had a lot of um, appreciation from uh, guys that have, have um, taken time to watch your, this interview. So on behalf okay. of everybody. Well, uh, uh, okay, thank, thank you very much. And Harry Christian, everybody. I know it's a difficult time for most people. And, um, you know, hopefully that no one's ill and not everybody's going to be okay and whatever. But, um, Yes. Keep training. And, uh, thank you for. I mean, you know, probably afterwards I'll probably think, oh, maybe I should have said this, or maybe I should have said that. <laughs> no, I'll always leave it. Thank we you. Can, we can always do this again. Don't worry. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, all right. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Sifu, and uh, and uh, look after yourself. And uh, please send me some some vegetables when they've when they've grown. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to try some on the go, so it'll be the next time. I'll have to throw them from the M25. I'll catch him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Sifu, I, I mean, both Alex and I, both Alex and I look forward to, to training with you very soon. We miss it. Okay. Um, no so. worries, Alex. You're welcome. I mean, I, I, as I said, I'm more of a hands-on person. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I like to, you know. Get, 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 get the missus involved, Sifu. Get the missus involved. I'm <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Sifu, thank you very much. Uh, have a lovely Thanks, evening. Uh, to all our, our viewers, thank you for all the questions. Uh, the video will be saved. And, uh, and hopefully we can do this again. So thank you all, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.